Some of us, some of us are. Some of us, some of us in here are old enough to remember. I see you down there. I see those old white guys. Some of us are old enough to remember when it was Republicans who were talking about freedom. It turns out now what they meant was the government should be free to invade your doctor's office. In Minnesota, we respect our neighbors and their personal choices that they make. Kamala Harris has chosen Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz as a running mate. Waltz has a troubled history as a governor that oversaw the BLM riots that burned the poorest parts of his state. He's also appeared to lie about his history as a veteran. And now even CNN contributors are saying that the bid to pick him was in an effort to attract the darker parts of the party, like anti-Jewish bigots. If Kamala Harris has already given up on appealing to middle-of-the-road Americans and is going full radical this election campaign, it is absolutely chilling to imagine how she might govern if given the chance. I'm Rachel Parker, and you're watching Rachel in the Republic. Hey everyone, welcome back to Rachel and the Republic. Joining me today to discuss Kamala Harris's VP pick is True North's very own columnist, Sue Ann Levy. Sue Ann, thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, you're very welcome, Rachel. So you spent a bit of time researching Tim Waltz and explaining why Kamala's bid to pick him might have been in an appeal to pander to the anti-Semites of, of the party. Why don't you explain a little bit about what went on into picking him and why you think it was really in a bid to appeal to anti-Semitics? Anti well, let's just say, first of all, that I have a good friend in Minneapolis. I've known her for a number of years. Uh, she's a Trumper, but she said that the, um, that the state has just declined considerably. And she was the first thing she said after hearing that Tim Waltz was uh, appointed was that at least we get rid of him. Uh, thank goodness she breathed a sigh of relief. And, you know, so that's not just because of the appeal to anti Semitic overtones or undertones, I should say, but, you know, what he's done to the state. But let's talk about the anti Semitism because uh, Camilla had a very good moderate choice in Josh Shapiro, the Pennsylvania governor who has, um, who's very, very popular, has a 61% popularity rating, who uh, is, you know, a proud Jew, and who could have helped her win Pennsylvania, which is a, a state that, you know, could turn around, either go um, Republican or Democrat. But apparently behind the scenes, the darkest corners of the party, the Ilan Omars, the Rashida Tlaibs, um, the Jamal Bowmans, uh, and, and various others, uh, convinced her or told her that uh, he, a Jew was just not on. And um, that's very sad. That's a very sad statement. Now, I understand from what I hear that he is, he, he played, Josh Shapiro played a very brave front at the rally subsequent to Tim Wall's uh, appointment, but uh, that he's hopping mad. And I would be too, because he's a moderate, uh, but unfortunately, and the, a lot of stories have come out, he's Jewish and no one Democratic Party is not ready for a Jew as a VP. It's actually quite shocking that this is the state of America in 2024. Mm -hmm. And as you said, you know, the Democrats need to win Pennsylvania. It's a big swing state. And I feel like Shapiro mm -hmm. would have been the obvious choice in, mm -hmm. in those efforts. And I mean, it's not surprising that you and I, that we're talking about this, that we're covering this at a conservative leaning independent news site. But this is so well known that it's actually even being covered in corporate media in America. Here, let's take play this next clip from CNN, where political analyst Anthony Van Jones said that in pick Picking Waltz over Shapiro, uh, Kamala Harris is actually caving into some of the darker parts of the party. We'll roll that clip now. Hey, listen, that, that, the, the, the conservatives, the right wing, the Republicans, they were chewing their fingernails down to the knuckle 
because they were afraid of a Josh Shapiro. They were afraid of a Mark Kelly. They're not as afraid of this uh, new governor because they think they can define him. Uh, and I, but so he, here's the challenge you've got in this party. Uh, and you know, people don't want to talk about it. We got to talk about it. On the one hand, you have a, a lot of young people who are concerned about Gaza. You have a lot of Muslims and Arabs and others. They have not felt seen by the Biden administration. Uh, you start, start hearing that genocide joke, that was building, that was building. And so those folks needed to have a, a candidate that they could feel comfortable with. This helps them in that regard. But you also have anti-Semitism that has gotten marbled into this party. You can be you know, for uh, the Palestinians without being an anti-Jewish bigot, but there are some anti-Jewish bigots out there. And there's some disquiet now, and there has to be. How much of what just happened is caving into some of these darker parts in the party. So that's going to have to get worked out. It's going to have to be, yeah. get talked through. So there we have a, a CNN contributor saying that this was a move that in some ways appealed to anti-Jewish bigots. I mean, how widespread is this known? Is this something that the American people are actually going to think about when they're recognizing the fact that Waltz was chosen over Shapiro? Is, is, it, is that being that commonly discussed right now? <laughs> Well, it is in some corners of the Jewish community, certainly here in Canada and south at the border, but unfortunately the liberal Jews, the Trump derangement syndrome pervades amongst some of the liberal Jews in uh, south of the border. And that's too bad because I think uh, Harris Waltz ticket would be very, very bad for the Jewish community. Let's talk about ha Kamala for a minute. She openly snubbed uh, Bibi Netanyahu when he spoke to Congress just a few weeks ago, and it wasn't just that he was speaking, he brought hostages that had been released, Noah Agamari, he brought with her, with him, I should say, and he brought members of the IDF that were of all ethnic backgrounds, and he brought a mother of a hostage. And so she was not only snubbing Bibi Netanyahu, but she was snubbing uh, Israelis and the people who suffered since October the 7th. And uh, she also um, has talked about pushing for a ceasefire. She's also talked about recently, I saw today, uh, an arms embargo uh, against Israel. And these are very, very dangerous words to, to, to a very dangerous train of thought. The other thing I would mention is that Tim Waltz is pictured with Ilan Omar basically hugging this anti, openly anti-Semitic member of Congress. They're apparently good friends. So whether he's been a supporter of Jews, of Jews or not in the past, I think the trend is going to be very much to the left, to the progressives, um, and to the denial of the fact that there's a real problem in the States with uh, anti-Semitism. When we're talking about Waltz as the choice here, I mean, this bid from Kamala to appeal to the really truly radical parts of the party mm -hmm. is, an, is a big issue. And then another factor is also just the fact that on a base level, Waltz seems like a really bad candidate. And I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if Kamala is, well, the Dems. I mean, I doubt she picked him. Let's be honest. The Democrats are a machine. They, they, I doubt mm -hmm. Kamala was on making the choices here. But I, I can't help but wonder if she's regretting that choice. One of the things that has absolutely blown up in the Dem space over the past number of days is this idea of stolen valor, this idea that Waltz has actually lied about his military history. Mm -hmm. He often talks about his, his years in the military as if he experienced combat on the ground. And it turns out that that wasn't the case at all, that actually when his when he, when he was scheduled to go to Iraq, when his unit was learned that they would be deployed to Iraq, he actually resigned. And now he talks about it as if he, he did experience combat. There's one direct quote from him. He said, quote, we shouldn't allow weapons that I used in wars to be on American streets. So sort of alluding to the fact that he has, has been in combat when he hasn't been at all. How big of a problem is this going to be for him and for the Democrats? Well, it's, you know, it's a big problem for certainly the conservative media. Let's see if it sticks. But there's so many other things, Rachel. Do you remember when M Milwaukee and Minneapolis uh, were burning uh, in 2020 when BLM engaged in huge riots following the George Floyd mur murder? And we had precincts, a uh, police precincts and police cars and a thousand businesses burned down. 
a hundred were damaged beyond repair. Mm -hmm. I think they're still trying to, to fix what was damaged. 500 million in damages. And he sat on his hands for more than three days, didn't call in the National Guard until three days in. And he said that, oh, the protesters needed some space uh, to protest, to express themselves. So, I mean, he's very soft on crime. He just, just passed a bill last year encouraging people to come to his state and those in his state to engage in gender uh, gender affirming, uh, I guess, gender affirming health care. And he apparently um, proposed the bill or announced the bill with a 12 year old trans young man standing beside him. Um, and so he's encouraging kids who aren't even haven't even reached puberty to uh, engage in gender affirming care. That's dangerous. Um, he also uh, <laughs> infamously, he's been called Tampon Tim because he also passed a bill. <laughs> I mean, I can't say it without laughing. That well, you have to laugh, like you have to laugh or you'll cry. Yeah, mandated the use of tampons in girls' and boys' washroom. And here's how the Democrats and the liberal left uh, alter the narrative people are coming on social media saying, Oh, what's wrong with uh, allowing? young ladies to have free tampons there's nothing wrong with that it's the fact that he's allowing uh men or young men or thinking that young men and there's pictures of the tampon machines above urinals in men in young boys washrooms i mean it's absurd this guy is a wacko nut bar you know, I always say because tampons really are pretty expensive. And so I always say, you know, if you ever need some and you don't want to pay for them, just have your husband or your boyfriend go into the male <laughs> restroom and see if they have any there yeah. that you can use. Because no one no one in those washrooms is using them. It's, it's honestly the most ridiculous thing. I want to get back to some of the stuff with the BLM rides in a minute. But first, I just want to touch a little more on this idea of stolen valor, because I think this is one mm -hmm. of one of the things that the Republicans are most successful with right now is in sticking sort of these lies to him because yeah. America just values their military so much and they really <laughs> have by and large Americans have so much respect for their veterans and I think the fact that this man is now lying about his history is going to be such a big problem for the party we're seeing this trend of stolen valor trending online where mm -hmm. men who have been deployed are posting photos of of them at their deployment and saying oh mm -hmm. not Tim Waltz and so I think this is something that the Republicans are successfully sticking to Tim Waltz and of course there's all the other things that you mentioned this seems to be the thing that's sticking right now and you said we're talking about it in conservative media but it's so bad that even once again CNN is being mm -hmm. forced to admit that this is a problem. We have another clip of that. Uh, let's play now for CNN just sort of correcting Tim Waltz on his own record of his military deployment. Waltz did make a comment speaking to a group. He's done it a couple of times where he has used language that has suggested that he carried weapons in a fighting situation. As you know, with your contact with the military, I know from coming from a military family, there is a difference between being in a combat area being involved at a time of war and actually being in a position where people are shooting at you. There is no evidence that at any time Governor Waltz was in a position of being shot at and some of his language could easily be seen to suggest that he was. So that is absolutely false when he said that about about uh, gun rights out there. So, I mean, this is CNN, like they will do absolutely anything to run cover for the party of their choice. They'll do anything to yeah. run cover for Kamala. So the fact that they're even sort of clarifying his record and saying that his words have been misleading, I mean, I don't think they're taking it as far as I am or as they even should. He's obviously yeah. lying, um, but they are doing, you know, some effort to to correct the record here. And, you know, I'm wondering, Stu Ann, do you think that this is going to be something that is going to go away throughout the campaign? Well, I don't think the conservative media will let it go away. Uh, and I think that the legacy media, the left wing media will try to bury it as they do with many other stories, but let's hope it doesn't go away. I mean, it's bad enough that you, uh, I guess, cut, switched and cut bait and didn't chose not to go to Iraq uh, when he was with the National Guard. But, but then you lie about your service. I mean, you know, it, it speaks to, I, I just can't 
begin to say the duplicity of of these politicians uh it's like kamala saying she was a tough prosecutor when we know from her history in california she was every everything but a tough prosecutor <laughs> and you know and even started let's say you wanted to talk about the riots started the minneapolis freedom fund and encouraged people to donate to people who were arrested during those fires during those riots uh to get them off and then they got off and some of them went on to murder people and to attack people and they were violent cr criminals and they were given money for bail to get out of prison so uh you know we're talking tough prosecutor and war hero i'm sorry but it, you know it's a very stark contrast to jd vance who actually did serve and actually came back a celebrated veteran so i think they've got a real problem on their hands with that that issue yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think you raise a good point. It's sort of this interesting juxtaposition where he was actually very soft on crime. He had soft on crime policies. And now he's mm -hmm. sort of trying to paint himself as this war veteran. And he's lying about his as history as a result of it. Like, you can't have your cake and eat it too. He's trying to mm -hmm. win over the most radicals while at the same time lying about his his military history to win mm -hmm. over those probably middle, middle ground Americans who do support their veterans and who do support the military. So he... Mm -hmm. Is, you know, he's trying to have his cake and eat too. I don't think it's working for him. I think that his record's being held against him here. But let's get to something you've raised a couple of times now, which I think is really one of the biggest components as to why Tim Waltz is just such a, a bad pick for, yeah. for the Dems here as, as Kamala's running mate. And that is his history as Minnesota governor when BLM burned down the poorest parts of yeah. of of his state and it, it hasn't recovered to this day and there's this clip that's been circulating online of his wife talking about it and it's one of the most disturbing things that you'll ever see it's just such elitism but i'll let the viewers watch it for themselves and come to their own conclusion before we continue analyzing it here's uh tim waltz's wife and minnesota first lady glenn waltz talking about the 2020 blm riots we'll play that now say those first days you know when there were riots. I could smell the burning tires. And um, that was that was a very real thing. And I kept the windows open for as long as I could because I felt like that was such a touchstone of what was what was happening. So she's talking about a, her city burning down and she wanted to keep the windows open so she could smell because she felt like it was a touchstone to the moment like how out of touch are these people they're out of touch and so is the media i mean i remember my wife and i watching from florida as a cnn reporter stood there and said that the riots were mostly peaceful as everything is burning to the ground behind them it was yeah. fiery but peaceful parody they are a parody of what we would call common sense and reality and i mean the fact that this woman i mean there are business like you said that have not recovered there are people who were engaged in these riots who got let out of jail free got a let out of jail free card and you know i am just really concerned that if these this duo kamala and um tim become uh the leadership of uh the united states become first you know, president and vice president, that this, the rot, the woke rot will spread right across the country. And God knows what's going to happen. The country is so divided now and people are so desperate because they can't make a living. And you've got these elitists talking about smelling smoke out of windows while buildings and businesses are being destroyed by yeah. bad people. <laughs> Now, elitists who were charged with caring for the state and are instead yeah. sitting at home yeah. and enjoying while it burns to the ground. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it's like a Saturday Night Live skit, only it's real. I mean, you got to laugh or you'll cry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it, exactly like you have to laugh at these things. It's more difficult when we're talking about a city being burned to the ground and the damage to those yeah. businesses. I'm sure those business owners are are not able to laugh about what happened. But, mm -hmm. you know, sitting at home, you just kind of have to give your head a shake. And I wonder when you talk about, you know, this duo going full woke. I mean, do you think that this is something that is working to working for them? Are they going to attract the the younger Americans who maybe haven't voted in the past? Or do you think that this is something that could ultimately really backfire on the Dems? 
Well, I'm going to hope that it does. And I don't think it will work for them because I think a lot of people, young, young voters are starting to their lives. They can't find jobs. They can't afford to buy housing. They can't, you know, they can't afford the cost of living. And I think reality is probably going to hit a lot of these people. I think they're trying to get those kids who, you know, protested at the various universities. They think they're going to get them. Um, and I don't know if that's going to even work because I don't know if you saw the clip from Detroit yesterday where uh, Kamala uh, reprimanded a few protesters. So she can't seem to even keep them <laughs> happy. Uh, so it's just really funny. I thought, like, you continue. I, I think her honeymoon is going to come to an end very, very soon. And by the way, did you watch the whole, uh, the, uh, her rally when she introduced him waltz and he was standing there and then he ducked behind her and it looked like he was sniffing the back of her head i think he was probably saying something to her he's the guy who coined the the phrase weird for jd vance but i think that guy is really weird i mean the facial expressions if i would invite your viewers to watch the facial expressions on that guy while he was being introduced as the next you know the vp pick yeah, that's funny. I'll have to go back and take a closer look at that. I find him to be quite blasé. Like he seems so boring to me, like such an uninteresting yeah. pick, which I sort of thought maybe that's what they were they were going for. Like he's quite radical in his policy, but they pick sort of a, a plain white man. And even in that in that opening clip that we played for everyone where he's he even sort of pokes fun at the he at the at the old white guys in the crowd. Like it's so predictable, like that they have to be apologetic yeah. for their for their mm -hmm their you know for the color of their skin and their age and, and all that nonsense but you know you pointed out you pointed out that clip of of Kamala in Detroit and I am interested to see how that's going to play out because everything I read about her seems like she has a very big ego and you know she, with these protesters you're gonna have to be very humble and I, I don't know I feel like that's not really gonna work out with the two of them I think at some point that ship's gonna be blown wide open I don't know how long she can keep a lid on on her own prestige and her own ego so mm -hmm. Lots at play here. Sue Ann, thanks so much for joining us You're today. You're welcome. You're welcome. It was fun. All right, everyone. That's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for tuning in to watch Rachel and the Republic. We'll be back next week with more American election coverage for you all. Have a great week and God bless.